It's me. It's D. Roy Cruz, your life applications officer. 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 Leroy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Look here, man. Woohoo! I'm excited. God darn it. It's Saturday. Tomorrow is my last day. Got to get up early, get to work, get it done, deal with this nonsense, get back here. And then I got two days to myself. I just thank God in Jesus' name. I mean, I don't practice the Sabbath the way I should practice it, being all like sonomonious about it and holy and all like that, like a lot of different denominations and religions do and stuff, but God gives me the Sabbath. I'm going to have my days off. My boss has been very, very, very good at giving me every Monday and Tuesday off. And a lot of the holidays have been falling on a Monday or a Tuesday. Memorial Day, Labor Day, you name it. Uh, I'm off. Oh, God, if I got to work and catch a bus on a holiday, oh, God, it's like I just want to. I just want to, like, yell at God. You know what I mean? I just want to go off. Like, put all the holidays, put all the holidays on Monday or Tuesday on my days off. Okay? People get mad at me at work. They're like, wait, you don't never work Monday. I said, you're right. You're, they're like, all the holidays fall on Mondays. Most of them, yeah. Memorial Day, Labor Day. Um, a lot of them, I mean, the, you know, the major holidays or the more major holidays are like Christmas and Easter, Thanksgiving, you go in sequence according to a date and wherever date that day falls on on that date, you know, that's it, but, okay, um, little disclaimer here, praise the Lord, um, This channel right here, I don't usually do these mellow videos like this. This channel right here is all about me kicking butt. My other two channels are more mellow, they're more social friendly, they're more biblical friendly. But God has been dealing with me over the last couple weeks. Um, had a situation at work. Um, where I lost it, where I got into it with someone, and he went on the internet and he uh, was trying to openly, publicly attack me. Now, today, you know, I, and, and I did the right thing. I went to the supervision, and I exposed the dude and what he was doing. And his boss disciplined him for it. But now the guy's my enemy. He don't like me anymore. And all I wanted him to do was respect me like I respect him. Do unto me as you want me to do unto you. All jokes aside, dude, like, I know you... You know, you're, you're, you feel like a hot shot and all like that. But, dude, like, be respectful. Like, you know, I understand you make more money than me. You're, you, you know what I'm saying? You have a bigger badge than I do. You know what I'm saying? Your boss 
ain't as strict about you as my boss is about me. Y'all got freedoms that I don't have. That's fine. But I'm working, dude. I'm trying to work here. Like, have some respect. I mean, it's not like I'm in your way. You know. And uh, let me say that, too, as a disclaimer. We Christians aren't in your way. We live here. We live in this country. And it doesn't matter where we live. The days of the Christian communities are over. The last thing anybody gives a care about is the Christian community. I mean, last time we tried to do a guitar festival, they said, what kind of guitar festival? We said, a Christian guitar festival. We're going to worship God. And um, that's it. I don't know. You know what? I Call me back. I says, okay, I called her back. Sorry, we don't want to get into that. What, what is there to get into? Oh, so it's okay for these rock bands to come to the park, okay, with all kinds of paraphernalia and profanity on their shirts. You know, um, Satanists and Satan that, Satan reigns, Satan rules. Satan's going to get you, you know, and all this kind of stuff. It's okay f for you to bring the rock bands in. And okay. You know what? We've been saying that these are the last days for... Since I came into the world, back in the 60s, they were saying these are the last days. Desert Storm, they said these were the last days. Y2K, last days. 1611, last days. I'll tell you what. I was glad those weren't the last days, but I'll tell you what. We're really in the last days today. But because I'm not kicking anybody in the butt in this video, I won't even bother to tell you how I'm going to read my scriptures here. Um, let's get on with it. First, you're on 22, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him. The title of this video is, What is it that we got? What Jesus is to, what Jesus means to Christians, okay? John 2.27, New King James Version, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie. And just as it, as it has taught you, you will abide in him. 1 John 5.20 And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true. In His Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. 2 Corinthians 5.13-21 For if we are beside ourselves, now we're talking. If we are beside ourselves, let that sink in. If we are beside ourselves, it is God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ, now, 
the world in these last days, they think that the love of Christ is a joke. But, not for me. Not for me. Not for me. Um, lost my place. For the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge. Because we judge this. That if one died for all, listen to me very carefully, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge this, that if one died for all, talking about Jesus, then all die. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, regard no one according to the flesh. This is why when we talk about all the different groups that are multiplying like different flavors of hotcakes out there in the secular world, when I talk about them, this is why I talk about the spiritual matter because you think that these things are an act of evolution or science. No, I think they're an act of prophecy. The Bible says that because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. It talks about all the things that will happen in the last days. Men shall be lovers of themselves. Okay? And the lust of the flesh and, the, you know, the pride of life and, you know, on and on and on. Let me read this. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge this, that if one died for all, then all die. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them. And rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. I'm not looking at anything as just you and how you feel versus how I feel. No, it says here, therefore, now do not regard anyone according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. In other words, they saw Christ in the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. So Christ is risen and ascended and is on the right hand of his Father. Therefore, this, oh man, I, I'm getting bubbles. If anyone is in Christ, what is it that happened to us that we feel that we have to try to convert people to follow us to come this way, to enter in here. What is it? Hear me out. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let me tell you something. You may look at me, or you may look at um, certain Christians, and and you feel like, what's so new about them? They look like they look like another Negro to me. They look like another plain old white rapper to me. They look like another jerk to me. Okay. Well, you don't know us before we knew the Lord. Because as I've said in other videos, 
before I knew the Lord, I was just as wild, supposedly, as the people I sometimes criticize. Okay? We were all once fornicators, adulterers, gay. Um, we were all once uh, feminists, abortionists, um, in and out of jail, drug abusers. We were all problematic people. Everything from problematic people to people that have a lot of pride because they've never been problematic, which is problematic. If you have a lot of pride because you're not like this guy over here, you're problematic. You also are a sinner that needs to be saved by grace, by Christ Jesus' blood and grace. But, whew, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I may not be perfect, but I'm not the man I used to be. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who here we go. I got more bubbles now. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ? This is what's happening to a believer when he gives his life to Jesus, when he repents of his sins and asks Jesus to be in his life. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. You can't separate God from Jesus or Jesus from God. It's a package. It's a trinity. It works together. Okay? And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Ministry of reconciliation. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why we try to get people to convert. It's called the ministry of reconciliation. It's not called the ministry of bigotry. It's the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself through us, not imputing their trespasses in them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are, am are ambassadors for Christ, though as though God were pleading through us. You wonder why I make all these videos telling other people how they should live their life. Why I call myself your life applications officer. Let me read it again. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. Listen carefully. This is one thing people don't say out on the street. They'll talk to you about being gay, transgender, blah, 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 you know, tell you what's wrong with you and all this stuff. But what they leave out is that you need to be reconciled to God. If you let somebody tell you that you shouldn't be, you shouldn't practice homosexuality. And so you go out there. And you say, okay, I quit practicing homosexuality. It don't mean a hill of beans. You have to be reconciled to God first. Then you automatically will get to know him and be a part of his family. And those things that are not like him will not even be on your mind, will no longer be in your heart. You have to be reconciled to God. Forget about giving up on something when you have no power to give up on it. But be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, here's one of my favorites right here. Um, Psalms 53, 
1, the fool was said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. For God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. And here's my very favorite verse out of all the verses in the Bible. Everybody has a favorite. This is the one that when I understood what this verse meant, I just kept repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Okay. Psalms 91, 1 and 2. He who trails in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Now some say one of these is Christ in the Old Testament and the other is God. Whichever way that is, he who trails in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay. The secret place, the newer translations, this is why I like the New King James Version and the King James and the older versions, the uh, NASB and older versions than that, the Young's Literal Translation, the Geneva, okay. The secret place is the very presence of God. Matter of fact, it says here, this is not part of the canon of Scripture, but it says here, safety of abiding in the presence of God. And that's exactly what it is. The secret place of the Most High is God's very presence. It becomes part of your life now. It's not something you just believe in. It becomes part of your life. This is how we never ask the question of evidence for God because we are the evidence of God. Because the presence of God lives in us and we do his work for him. We, 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 we're upset because he's upset. We're joyous and happy because he's He's happy. We're blessed because he blesses us and, and we bless him back. Okay? We get excited about God because when we repent and we accept God, all the angels in heaven are excited about us. Okay? He who dwells in the secret place. The secret place is the very presence of God. Of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, say it to yourself, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. And nobody's going to take that away from me. How much time I got here? I'm going pretty good. Um... Let me take my study version here and look up some notes here that are in this Nelson Complete Edition. This is the Nelson Complete Edition here. They have, they put a lot of things in here so that I don't have to bounce around and go back and forth and look up all these verses when I don't have that kind of time. So, here we go. Um, the key terms of salvation are faith, the gospel, grace, justification, law, 
propitiation, redemption, righteousness, salvation, and sin. Okay? We have to put each one in its proper place. Okay? Um, 1866. Or is it? Well, yes it is. 1866. Where is that where I was just at? Let me go back here. 1866. Okay. The blessings of the blessings Christians enjoy. We are chosen by God. We bear this in our spirit. We're adopted into God's family. So it doesn't matter that we're not Jews because we are adopted into his family. Acceptance before God. Forgiveness of sins. And a lot of people don't understand that the reason why they are so gullible and naive, the reason why they don't care, and the reason why they get so angry at someone else's opinion of them or or opinion of something that they look up to, the reason why they are so angry and want to fight about every little tiny disagreement is because they don't understand sin in their life is a, is a weight. It's a burden. It holds them down. But we as Christians, we understand that we have forgiveness of sins. Therefore, if I do something wrong, I go to God. He, I go to God through Christ because Christ is my high priest. I don't go to the Pope, or not the Pope, the, the priest, and do confession. I go to Christ because he's the only one that has risen and is sitting at the right hand. The others are still in the grave waiting for that day for them to arise. Okay? But God grants me forgiveness of sins. Therefore, I can, I can talk to God and be forgiven of my sins. Insight into God's will. When I read the scriptures, when I talk to God through prayer, God shows me a life that never had anything to do with my secular life. The life in the world that I had before I got to know the Lord. I have a totally different life. That's what that verse means when it says, He that is in Christ is a new creation. Okay? Um, an eternal inheritance. We know and we are 100% sure that not only are we going to heaven, but we are sure of our gifts and the promises of heaven and what heaven is like according to Scripture. We are able to believe this. We accept this. And we take joy and pleasure in it. The world wants to tell us that this stuff is a myth. That it's fairy tales. He that is in Christ is a new creation. We have the ministry. We have been reconciled by God. Now therefore we share the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. The seal of the spirit. Okay. We are saved. And no one can pluck us out of his hand. We are sealed for eternity. God's mercy and love, wisdom and knowledge. Thank you, Lord. As I said, this is why I call myself your life applications officer. This was a gift that was given to me by the laying on of hands by the eldership. When my pastor was struggling with cancer. Three people not knowing what the other one said to me told me the same thing. And ever since that day, I've called myself a life applications officer, even before I started doing YouTube. Okay? Um, divine power. 
This is the problem with Baptists and people that don't believe the whole Bible. They believe that certain parts of the Bible aren't, aren't prevalent for today. There's no evidence for that. Okay? Divine power and the spiritual life we have because we believe in the miracles and the, and the power of God's Spirit within the canon of Scripture in the New Testament. The promise of eternal kindness. The knowledge that God's plan for us is good. And it is. There is no sorrow with it. Unity and peace with all believers. I need to work on that. Okay? Heavenly citizenship. Access to God through Christ. And there's more. Where's the other one? 1881. Let's go there real quick. It's going to say pretty much the same thing. But a little bit different. But it's funny how these are coming out of different books of the Bible and they are in agreement with each other. 1881, I scratched that one out because it wasn't what I was looking for. Um, where was I just at? 1866, let's try. 1787, I think I already did that one. I might be good to go. 1787, I think I might have done that one. What is it? 1881? Is that what I said? I think I already went there, dude. What are you doing, dude? You already went there. Right? I think. Yeah, I already went there. It must be 1866. I know I didn't get them both because I know I didn't get them both. One of these I didn't do. All right, come on, quit playing with me. Uh, duh, that's 1966, dummy. Nineteen, dummy. Come on now. All right. 1866. Playing with me. I'll go off. Sometime today, Junior. Then you wonder why these millennials all are on the computer. Well, I did that one. Must be the 17 one. 1787. Yeah, I know I didn't do both of them, so where is it? It's going to pretty much say the same thing, but slightly different, and it might be. Here we go. Description of the Christian pre presents himself to God. Receives transformation by a renewed mind. As I said in other videos, to reject God is to live life with an artificial brain. Okay? Because you are trying to build philosophies and trying to build arguments on what has been handed down to you 
from those that are enslaving you. Let me say it again. You have an artificial brain, like artificial intelligence, which is a robot that is built by man. But you have an artificial mind because you are making your beliefs, your faith, and your argument based upon things handed down from you from the very men, the light men of this country or this world that are enslaving you. They're telling you how to treat religion. They're telling you what God is and leaving this out. They're telling you what it's all about. Okay? But they're not letting you go to the green zone. Okay? And learn what is true by nature given to us by the true and living God which does exist, which does exist. I promise you, he does exist. But we present ourselves to God. This is what we do. Receives transformation by a renewed mind, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And also, as I read, uh, 2 Corinthians five seventeen. he that is in Christ is a new creation. There is a transformation there. I love that. And I know that I've been transformed. Now, some people might look at me. Yeah, you've been transformed to be an idiot. Okay, whatever. I've been transformed. Okay, because trust me, if you think I'm an idiot now. Okay. Uh, before I got saved, you wouldn't get away with calling me an idiot. Okay, because I've been on you. All right. <laughs> all right. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be looking for you, you know. All right. I mean, you know, like, uh, I'm five foot three and a half. And every day people try to, like, punk me. But if I wasn't a Christian, that short man syndrome would be out of control, baby. Out of control. But I don't have short man syndrome. And I get bullied for it. Okay, people, people are an inch taller than me. Try to give me trouble because I don't have short man syndrome. They, they think I'm a punk because I I speak to everybody with, you know, I respect those that are in authority over me. I respect those that are smarter than me. I respect those that have done more work than me, those that have more education than me, whether they're young or old. I respect them. I, I address everybody as yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I treat the ladies as ladies and I treat the men as men. And I don't care if what their what they think their gender is, or what they or or whether they need a woman to be a woman or a man to be a man. I'm sorry, I'm a born again Christian. I'm going to stick to the natural order of things, which was given to us by God, not by evolution. Okay, but. Uh, Has spiritual gifts according to the grace from God, 1 Corinthians, honors civil law. Everything from how we handle our trash all the way to what we put in our body to how we drive our car. We respect civil law. We respect the laws of the land because God gives us respect to respect those in authority and not go by how we feel, but go by who we are in Christ. Loves others, pursues peace, becomes like-minded toward others. And that is good enough. So, what is it that we got? Well, he that is in is in Christ, is a new creation. Um, let me read it to you real quick. Real quick. Um, what, 
We have been transformed. I love this verse. I got to read it to you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so therefore, we are very respectful of our bodies. Okay, no, no provocative, no provocativeness, no lewdness. We are very respectful of our bodies and inside and what, what we show on the outside and what we take on the inside. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. So, thank you for watching D. Roy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Um, this is what we got. This is what we got. And I just felt that I needed to, you know, um, on this channel, because I never talk about that. On this channel, on my other channel, I open up my Bible all the time. But on this channel, I hardly read from my Bible. I'm more aggressive on this channel than my other two channels. But I felt that if I'm going to be aggressive, I also have to be discreet. And show exactly what I mean by being aggressive. Okay. So may God add a blessing to a reading of his word. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. Have a great night. God bless you this weekend. Don't go out and drink. Don't go out and get yourself in trouble. Don't act crazy and stupid. But think about. What God wants to do in your life. If you can believe that God exists, then you can also believe that God wants to do great things in your life. And that you can reach up and grab them things if you want them bad enough. Okay? God bless you. Talk to you soon again with more.